let's throw in the front diff. Ugh, that was way too heavy. Not worth it for that shot. Brought to you in part by Alpine Toyota. That there is the stock diff that came with that forum. But we're not gonna use it. Because if we look up the axle code that is right there, the A02A, so the A doesn't really matter. The O2 means that it is a 358 ratio. And the last A means that it is a open diff. And that 358 ratio just isn't gonna work for us in this. That is way too high of a gear because we're gonna be putting bigger tires on this thing than stock. Luckily for us, the parts forerunner that donated its frame to this project, I happen to know was a 430 ratio. So that is lower. So we're gonna end up using that diff right there. And other than the ratio, the only other difference I see is this actuator. It's definitely different on this diff than it is on this diff. But I should be able to unbolt this one, bolt it up to that other one, and be good to go. I hope anyways. Something else pretty nifty that the parts for it came with is these guys here. These are diff drop spacers. And essentially, I mean, th it's self-explanatory. They, they drop your diff. They lower your diff about an inch. And uh, you kind of want to do this when you lift your vehicle, just so that the CV angle isn't like terrible and constantly wearing out your CVs prematurely. Uh, we never had that before. The lift kit that we previously had in this foreigner, that rough country one, didn't come with diff drop spacers, but uh, I'm definitely throwing them in this time around. Check it out, I just picked up some new, well, new to me, Tundra drops. And now, I know you might be thinking, we don't have a Tundra. Fun fact, if you take the top hat off of these struts and then replace it with a top hat from a 4Runner, you could put them in the 4Runner and then all of a sudden, you'll have a essentially free three inch lift. All right, so while I was trying to change out the top hat on these struts, my spring compressors were actually making a huge horseshoe on both sides and it seemed awfully sketchy. So what I did is I took my struts to a shop and got them to swap out the top hat for me. So now let's throw these in and let's measure the difference between these Philstein 5100s of the old man emu coils and these Tundra struts. Now to be fair, it is currently a lift coil and shock setup in this thing right now, so I don't know if we're even going to measure any difference. But what I am willing to bet is loaded and with weight on it, there will be a difference. Unfortunately, there's no engine or drivetrain or doors or most of the interior on this thing, so no matter what, we're not gonna get very accurate here. Unloaded and with what is theoretically a three inch lift kit, we are looking at from the top of the tire to the top of this notch here exactly 18 inches. So let's throw that other strut in and um, well, we'll see if there's a difference.
Well, it's interesting results thus far. Uh, before from here to here was 18 inches and now we're like 16 and three quarter. So we're actually lower an inch and a quarter. But as I said, these are tundra springs. They are for essentially a full size truck. So when there's weight in it, they shouldn't compress as much as those ones. I'll hold on to these Bilsteins and Old Man Emu coil springs just in case I do decide to go that route. I might rebuild those and throw those in instead of these. But for now, these are a free strut and there's nothing wrong with them. So in the meantime, we're gonna roll with these. So now that I've got the Tundra struts in place, I kind of just want to finish off the front suspension here. So that means pulling it back apart, pulling the spindle out, putting in the new upper and lower ball joints, throwing the CV axles in. I'm gonna paint the spindles, make sure they look nice and pretty as well. Put the rotors on, put the calipers on. The calipers also need a coat of paint. And yeah, just finish off this front suspension. But first, we're gonna do the dust plate delete kit. And by that, I mean we're gonna unbolt it and cut it off. Uh, mainly because it's rotten, it's bent. But the main reason is I just don't like running dust plates. Uh, they get bent, they get caught up in the rotor, they make grinding noises, and just when you're on the trail, they can be annoying. And we've actually had them bend on the 400 before, and we thought that we blew a wheel bearing or something. So. Easier just to get rid of them, and on these specific forerunners, uh, they're not used as spacers or anything like that, like they are on the solid axles. So, easy enough to just unbolt it. In this case, I'm going to cut it off because I'm not pulling the actual hub apart here because the wheel bearings are just fine on this unit. Be free of your best shield. There we go. Ooh, yep, that's exactly what I wanted. It moved. Uh, there's the closest hammer. There we go. Voila, ball joint is removed. And now that the spindle is relieved of its ball joints, time to get a wire brush, clean this thing up, give her a coat of paint, make it look nice and pretty, and then uh, reassemble it with brand new ball joints. All right, I changed my mind. It's not quite time to get this thing all sanded down and painted quite yet. Reason being is I've had the upper ball joint in the freezer overnight, and now I'm gonna take my torch and heat this up. And with that being done, in theory, heating this up will expand this metal and the ball joint being in the freezer will shrink it. And I'll be able to tap the ball joint into place through the bottom um, without using a press. So let's see how that goes.
it's in there, and I'm gonna take it off the vise so we can get a better angle at uh, hitting it. Not gonna lie, I had to fight her a bit, but that is the upper ball joint installed. Now, I'm gonna clean this thing up, give her a fresh coat of paint so it's nice and pretty. Then she gets the bottom ball joint, which is a lot easier, that one bolts on. And uh, then she gets installed in the forerunner. One good thing about it being so flippin' hot outside is it only takes a few minutes for the paint to dry. Let's throw this in. So, I'm gonna start by putting the spindle in the CV and up into the upper control arm and I'll rest it there and then I'll bolt up the new lower ball joint. There, back it up and over. Oh, the smash! Ah! Oh, just smashed my hand on the on the strut tower. Oh, that felt really good. There we go. And throw that nut on. As I was saying earlier, the lowers are so much easier to do than the top because they don't press in. Uh, they just bolt on. If I that direction. Yep, that direction. Pull that out. Line that sucker up uh, like so. And it's gonna pull to get in. Now, lift this guy up. Put that ball joint in its home. It's in its home. Huh. Not even that bad. Throw cotter pins, top and bottom. Alright, so next up, we are moving on to brakes. And these calipers may look super rusty, crusty, and old, but in reality, <laughs> they're not. They weren't replaced too long ago on that Forerunner. I just live in a place that, you know, things rust. And especially these part stores calipers, they just seem to rust so quick. Even the new ones that are on my pickup look pretty crusty. So same game plan as the spindles. I'm just gonna take my wire brush, kick off the bit of the surface rust in chunks that I can, and give her a skiff of paint. Oop. And the rotors are the same deal. They are also essentially new they just got a tiny bit of surface rust from sitting around and a little bit of braking when this thing's rolling again and they'll look good as new again so we're using those as well Something like that. And just like that, the front suspension in our Forerunner is now complete. It's got the Tundra struts, it's got the freshened up spindles, new upper and lower ball joints, new control arms, which you guys saw in the last video. The CVs are reinstalled, the diff is reinstalled, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> the front suspension can't get any more complete than that. Anyways, guys, that about wraps up this week's episode of Dirt Garage, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you could do me a huge favor, smash that thumbs up button and hey, Consider subscribing. I upload weekly Toyota building, wheeling, and off-roading content. Anyways, I'll see you next week. Peace. Yeah. Let's go. I'ma make a couple stacks, do exactly what I want to. Mix a couple tracks, get a lady that I'm drawn to. Turn up to the max, get me faded till I'm gone, dude. I do what I want, couldn't stop me if you wanted to. I just work hard, yeah, harder than the rest. Some people say I'm lucky, others say.